All right, guys, a sad history of McDonald's happy meal. Let's check it out. First of all, there's a history of it. Secondly, oh man, I feel different. A little bit sleepy, tired, and exhausted. But, but without further ado, let's get into it. The McDonald's Happy Meal is like the Manhattan Project of marketing to children. One guys, I actually like Happy Meals. If somebody, when I was out, guys, McDonald's is one of my favorite restaurants. But I don't just, I just don't eat there that much because I'm poor. As you may know, as uh, you, you probably do know because you watch a lot. If you do watch the video, my Once videos. Once the world saw kids lose their collective minds over that smiling little box and the surprise. <laughs> it is smiling, guys. As licensed toy inside, there was no putting the genie back in the bottle. But how did one of the most famous parent traps ever created come to be? And how has it changed over the years? This is a McDonald's Happy Meal. Your kids will love it. It's fruit and fun in a box. Games, puzzles, jokes, and a prize. A prize? Get yourself ready for a trip through McDonald's. Oh my gosh, man. I, guys, n McDonald's nuggets. Nothing compares to them, bro. They're my favorite item. Today on Weird... Like a nice little, like, you know, Happy Meal. You just open it up, bang. There's a big meal inside, bro. It makes me happy, not gonna lie. History food, we're serving up the kid-sized history of the Happy Meal. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. Oh my gosh, those burgers are floating straight and up. Let us know in the comments below what other fast food nostalgia you would like to hear about. Okay, let's get happy. Happy, happy. I wonder what time happy. it is. It's, it's time, time for a happy, happy meal, meal at McDonald's. Happy, happy, happy. In 1974, Yolanda Fernandez de Cofino, also known as Doña Yoli, opened Guatemala's first ever McDonald's franchise location. Snap, is she the one who started it, guys? She might just be. Alongside her. I'm just using conductive reasoning, or inductive, whatever um, kind of reasoning that is. Her husband, Jose. Being a mother herself, Doña Yoli noticed that McDonald's had no reasonably sized options for small children, and three, four, and five-year-olds were being made to eat the same big meal. I know, right? Come on now. M McDonald's should have realized sooner, guys. Those aren't for kids. Big Mac? Can a kid even eat a Big Mac in one sitting? I can't currently, but I'm also just full right now. I don't know. Meals as that, um, that might be just my full mind talking. Adult counterparts. Giving a toddler a Big Mac is asking them to grow up real fast. This nine layer gastronomic indulgence is known as a Big Mac. What's more, getting young kids to make even the simplest decision can be a near impossible task. And the wee ones were often overwhelmed when it came time to order. So Doña Yoli decided to make her very own child friendly option that had both smaller portion sizes and fewer choices. Dang, bro. Did she even get permission from corporate before doing this, guys? She just straight up went for it, bro. She introduced to her restaurant the menu Ronald, a kid friend. Like, just straight up went to it, and guys. Option that came with a burger, a small fry, and a sundae. It was an instant hit, and McD's corporate in Chicago took notice. Though it may be hard to imagine a time when kids wouldn't throw their favorite Marvel's you just straight up started a revolution here, guys. Now it's still being sold today. Superhero in front of a train for a trip to Mickey D's. McDonald's had been losing steam among families and children for years. The clown alone was no longer enough to lure them in. Dude, that, that's a scary clown right there. Not gonna lie, I'd be pretty scared. Mom told me never to talk to strangers. Well, your mother's right as always, but I'm Ronald McDonald. The now defunct burger chef. <laughs> That's why take your kids to McDonald's, I guess. That's what they're trying to sell. Endless supply of free toys. I mean, I liked going to McDonald's. And the uh, I, I wouldn't say no back then, right, guys? Um, now that I'm not a kid no more, my dad doesn't even get me this no more or anything, guys. The immortal Burger King. Seriously, how long has that guy been on the throne? Had <laughs> both made major moves to tear families out from Ronald's clutches. What's more, McDonald's had redesigned many of its restaurants away from the old white and red tile interiors and renovated them with brick walls. You know, like school. 
kids love school. Nah. I, I, I couldn't wait to graduate, that's all I gotta say. They were no longer... I mean, I like YouTube school. ...as vibrant and welcoming as they once were, and kids took notice. McDonald's needed to pivot hard if they wanted to stay relevant in the family market, and Bob Bernstein was just the man for the job. Bernstein's ad agency had managed the company's marketing in several cities for over a decade. He'd already tried handing out free stuff to kids before, such as the Happy Cup and the Sippy Dipper Straw, but... What the heck? Oh, that's a cool straw, man. I wonder how much those go for nowadays. But even the cutest McDonald's pencil puppet couldn't bring in the Rugrats. Oh, well, don't, don't go after the kids, Ronald. Okay, while sitting at the breakfast table with his son, Bernstein had an epiphany. Cereal companies had been stuffing toy prizes within their boxes for decades, and he noticed that kids would absolutely flip their wigs over even the smallest surprise. Guys, they're going to start selling Pokemon cards with their Big, Mar ba Big Mac, uh, I mean, uh, with their Happy Meals, guys. They're going to start giving them out within the next few months, and everybody's going to be happy, man. If I had money, I'd, I'd try to get some Pokemon cards. These boxes often featured games, puzzles, and jokes on their side panels. If McDonald's could somehow capture the wonder of the cereal box and sell it to their pint-sized customers, the company's woes would go the way of Birdie the Early Bird, meaning they were turned into chicken nuggets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was your mascot? That mascot just got fried, man. That, ma that mascot doesn't look like that's a mascot no more, man. Well, look at the look at the first Happy Meal, man. They got little mazes on there. Mazes are so common with like uh, the kids' menus and stuff, man. Those are fun to do, man. I would do them as an adult occasionally. Like uh, connecting a brain or something, right, guys? But man, that is definitely old style Happy Meals, though, right? Oh, what zebras have no other? What do zebras that have that no other animals have? Does anyone know? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't want to go and ask Google, but... In 1977, by combining Doña Yoli's child-sized combo meals with Bernstein's cereal box-inspired concept, the Happy Meal made its U.S. debut. Its name was a reference to a 1960s McDonald's jingle that called the restaurant a happy place. Guys, if I was a kid back then, I would have heard that commercial, like, hundreds of times. It would have been burned into my brain. Not gonna lie. It was initially introduced only regionally for McDonald's franchise locations. In and that's what they usually do. They test it in a few markets before going worldwide. Kansas City, Denver, and Phoenix. Man, Phoenix gets all the good stuff. Over three billion people served. I wonder how much it is now, guys. Like, it's gonna be a ton, right? Its first iteration featured a regular-sized burger, fries, Keebler cookie, a soda, and a Cracker Jack toy. The food came in also featured several exterior panels with games, puzzles, and jokes, just like those featured on the exterior of cereal boxes. Or should that be exterior boxes? That Guys, do they even include that nowadays? I don't think they do, do they? Kids love they got super, super, like, basic with it, I guess. I don't know. But the McDonald's corporate heads and franchise owners alike remained skeptical. They tested it out in regional markets for two more years before finally giving it the green light. And Happy Meals at last wound up in restaurants across the U.S. Sure, the word spread and everybody's like, yo, let's, let's get it, let's As get it. In 1979, just in time for a time with Ridley Scott's Alien. Guys, when that Super Mario Bros. movie... Came out, it was a terrible movie for me, man. I'm talking about the first iteration of it. It wasn't even a Super Mario Bros. movie. It was like an adult movie, bro. It was... It was... It was not cool. I'm just saying that. Oh, turns out they skipped that one. Are you sorry, sir, that you brought your son along to see Alien? No, ma'am. I think he should have seen it. It's something that he needs to know that things could like that could happen in life. That could be a true story. <laughs> Those first Happy Meals cost a dollar and ten cents a pop, and each contained a Dang, imagine if they were that much now. That's how much they should be, guys. Toy surprise. Kids never knew what toy they were going to get, making the Happy Meal the perfect gateway to a future gambling addiction. The initial prizes included the McDoodle stencil, spinning tops, and McDonald's-themed erasers. Wish we could have seen those kids' faces light up when they got their erasers. Later that same year, the 
I don't think they'd give a racers now, right guys, would they? Happy meal. That'd be like a choking hazard or something. Put forward its first ever movie tie-in, featuring a Klingon commercial for Star Trek The Motion Picture, along with a Star Trek themed Happy Meal box. Despite its immediate popularity among families and kids, and thus its growing popularity with the corporate office, many franchise owners remained skeptical. Thus, while the corporate heads were busy giving Doña Yoli the 1982 Ronald Award for her idea, Man, they should give her like a couple million dollars, bro. I hope they did, man. That's what she deserved. Idea, her second Ronald Award, following her 1980 award for being the first franchisee to host children's birthday parties, many franchise owners refused to sell Happy Meals at their own locations. Why, man? They felt that constructing the Happy Meal boxes added too much to the already busy workloads of their employees. And the toys my head, man. took up too much valuable storage space within their restaurant. Man, these, these, they need to change their mind quick, bro. You know what I mean? They're losing up tons of customers, I think. Likewise, the Happy Meal came and went from individual locations for its first couple years on the market. And it wasn't until 1984, when McDonald's introduced the chicken nugget, that the Happy Meal became a mainstay in locations across the nation. McDonald's slowly phased out Bob Bernstein's idea of putting games, puzzles, and jokes on the box's exteriors. And they instead focused on upping their prize game by collaborating with movie studios and popular toy brands. Something they still do today, guys. In the process, they made some of the most memorable choking hazards of the last 40 years. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, though. He said most memorable choking hazards. Like their 1982 partnership with Playmobil. McDonald's ordered 30 million Playmobil figures to give away with their Happy Meals, distributing 10 million of which after just one week. The Guys, I've never heard of that. Must be way before my time. Maybe my dad played with these kind of toys, but not figures me. Figures were too small and thin, though, and they were quickly found by the Consumer Product Safety Commission to be hazardous for children under three. Oh, that little hat, man? Nah, bro. I gotta make it like one uniform piece. McDonald's issued an immediate voluntary recall, and they offered to trade free cookies or ice cream in exchange for the bloodthirsty figures. I don't think they would do that regularly, right, guys? Only, only because there's a recall. It's their fault. They should give a ten dollar coupon or something. Not a bad deal if you prefer eating sugar over plastic. <laughs> In 1983, McDonald's got back on track with a partnership with Mattel. They made officially branded Hot Wheels for their Happy Meals, along with the Barbie Loves McDonald's playset for toy stores across the country. Barbie loves McDonald's. Did I have a Big Mac to go? Yeah. <laughs> The rest of the 80s saw media tie-ins with Ghostbusters, the Berenstein Bears, Muppet Babies, my... There we go. And then now those are the uniform, just large to little toys, pony guys. And the Little Mermaid. My Little Pony was back then? No way. They also had food changeables. Is that... What? They still look like this today, man. Which were basically just Transformers that turned into McDonald's foods remember... rather than high-speed vehicles. Apparently, oh my god, that's pretty cool. Cybertron. Yeah, that is pretty Ronald cool. Decided by fries and a Coke. McNugget Buddies, vague Mr. Potato Head knockoffs, but in nugget form, and Jungle Book Windups, which closed out the decade with walking versions of Ka, Shere Khan, and. No, this is what I used to get, man. These are the stuffs I would get, bro. And they're pretty cool for like uh, five minutes, you know what I mean? King Louie. That's about it. Where do the stars of Sega Sonic 3 go when the game's over? Sonic? Man, yeah, bro, playing Sonic? Are you guys, I didn't really grow up with Sonic. I grew up with Mario games. You guys in there? Hey, here's a hint. They're at McDonald's. The 90s kicked things off with a Super Mario Bros. 3 partnership, which... Dang, bro. Uh, I was too young for this, bro. No. <laughs> this is so with cool. With plastic Marios, Luigis, Goombas, oh, and Koopas in household... That's so games. cool. Right alongside all the Nintendos that had recently arrived to destroy everyone's reading comprehension. <laughs> Good job, Nintendo. These were then shortly followed. Because they make some entertaining games, right, guys? Followed by two separate DC comic tie-ins, one of which was considerably better received than the other. Toys featuring Looney Tunes characters in classic DC superhero costumes debuted in 1991. In case you ever wanted to see Bugs and Daffy juiced up like a pair of South Florida bouncers. 
Oh my gosh. One year later, the Golden Arches released what should have been a golden tie-in with the 1992 blockbuster Batman Returns, a oh, movie bad. that is very much not for kids. It was very violent. It was a total attack against kids, the whole movie. Parents and Chris... Hey, bro. Are oh, McDonald's is under fire again. I, I guess they sold it for the adult, the adult crowd, but the adult crowd, you know, it was a little bit too R-rated, I guess. Argued ...that the film's violent content shouldn't be promoted with toys intended for pushing the film's graphic content on young children. Taking my head. You did it wrong for once, McDonald's. And McDonald's actually canceled the promotion. The rest of the decade was pretty... Dang, th those ones might sell for more then, guys, because they canceled it early. Smooth sailing for the hamburger chain as they landed even more media tie-ins for their Happy Meals, including Spider-Man, Power Rangers, Pocahontas, The Lion King, and Mulan. They I, I totally forgot what m movie Mulan was, man. But every other one he mentioned right there, I do they remember. They also had major partnerships with some of the country's biggest toy brands, like Barbie, Furby, and Tamagotchi. Remember two of those? Tamaguchi. Oh my gosh, they gave away those things. Still, all of these cool. partnerships pale in comparison. Oh, I remember these. Oh Listen yeah. What may still be the biggest Happy Meal toy ever, the Teeny Beanies Beanie Baby. Oh my gosh, they actually did it. The following is in code to a. That's so awesome, man. An actual like plushie, dude. Yeah. For the win. For the Boy, win. Panic in the streets. I bet whoever uh, invented Beanie Babies rich now, guys. Beanie Tay, Eenie Bay, Abies Bay, or Ack Bay at McDonald's Bay. First released in 1997 during the height of the Beanie Baby craze, the original Teeny Beanies lineup was so coveted that McDonald's had over 100 million of the little critters made. And if you're thinking that should have been plenty, you do not remember the year 1997. Customers bought up armloads of Happy Meals, but told the cashiers to hold the food. They only wanted the toys. What the heck? You could have gave you that way to like a homeless person or something, man. Restaurants in major cities and across the Midwest quickly sold out, and fist fights and brawls broke out in franchises across the. Dang, it's like Popeyes, bro. The nation. There were first form of Popeyes, because you know they say Popeyes uh, fights break out at Popeyes, and they don't even give out toys. The McDonald's delivery men being assaulted as they tried to restock restaurants. As a result, kids were often left toyless. While the adults around them racked up dozens of teeny beanies in hopes of an early retirement. Dang, bro. Straight up selling them for profit, guys? I mean, they, they look so cool. For each of the three years that followed, McDonald's came out with an all-new exclusive lineup of teeny beanies. But they were never again able to repeat the fervor of that first teeny beanie spring. Oh, dang, bro. It was the one and done, for the most part. It is probably for the best. In the new millennium, people have started to question McDonald's practice of targeting children, and many have accused the Happy Meals of being an unethical attempt to entice kids and undermine parents. After all, your parents don't love you like SpongeBob toys do. What? Oh my gosh. Boy, yeah, made a lot of those. As concerned... <laughs> Guys, I, I, thankfully I, I didn't grow up with SpongeBob. I was a little bit too old. I mean, I did for a little. Then I, I turned into a teenager. It's mounted over both America's ever-increasing obesity epidemic and its love affair with generating plastic waste. These got all those seagulls, man. Accusations. Hey, they're, they 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 clean up clean up the the debris pretty well, right, guys? Only grew louder by the mid 2000s. It's whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't come at Ronald like that, man. Seen what the? That everyone from parental groups to governmental bodies across the globe. Everybody's trying to get a little lawsuit. Had had enough of the clown. Even Disney turned its back on the Golden Arches in 2006, and the two went over a decade without collaborating on any new promotions. Like Roxette said, it must have been love, but it's over now, for a little while. Facing this pressure to change, McDonald's decided to take the issue head on, and has spent the past 15 years attempting to address these concerns. While the Happy Meal does still come with a toy, the toy is now often made of 3D paper or recycled plastic. What's more, McDonald's has pledged to reduce fossil fuel-based plastic usage 90% company-wide by 2025. Check back on this video in two years and- Dang, bro. No plastic. No what are they gonna use, man? They did. Paper? All the while. <laughs> paper is a choking hazard, it seems. While the company has cut both soft drinks and cheeseburgers from Happy Meals. 
replacing the former with a choice of milk, water, or juice, and the latter with plain ham. Go birds. Fellas, it's called a happy meal, not a sad meal. Guys, I couldn't even eat the... Uh, man, they should have like a little mini chicken burger to use. They've also shrunk the size of the kids' fries and have added apple slices to all Happy Meal orders, reducing the caloric value of the Happy Meal by 20% of the process. Today, almost one in four orders at McDonald's contains a Happy Meal, and about four million Happy Dang, bro. One in four? What? Meals are sold in more than 100 countries every day. That amounts to over one billion Happy Meals sold per year or one billion tiny little toys that will clutter up kids' rooms the world over. Yeah, those are basically waste. Most recently, playing on Millennial. Unless you collect them. Oh my gosh, yeah. When did Grimace, when did they all have four eyes? Nostalgia what? for childhood materialism, McDonald's tried its hand at making Happy Meals for adults. They partnered <laughs> up with lifestyle brand Cactus Plant Flea Market to make the all-new combo. Yeah, I'm actually cool with Which that. Which was basically just a boxed version of the Big Mac meal or 10-piece McNuggets. Oh snap, I'm guys! Male, but with a you get a toy? Four-eyed statue to show off at work. <laughs> Forty-year-old Happy Meal kids lost their ever-loving minds for these toys, proving once and for all that no matter <laughs> how old you get, you're never. That is so awesome. Is, wait, is, is, he using, is, is he using his middle finger right there? Because they have all four um, chicken nuggets showing right there. They're too old. There's only four chicken nuggets. Shapes. To get into a fist fight over Beanie Babies. So what do you, don't do that. <laughs> you think? Did you get happy for a Happy Meal? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other... Someone said it's a total attack against kids as Kid is of Batman Returns. In the theaters on his ninth birthday, Danny Slasky was a plant and trained to say those horribleized. These toys from the late 80s and early 90s were actually good. Yeah, they were. All right, guys, that's a la that's a video. Thank you guys for watching. Check out Weird History Food in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. I do all my reactions live on Twitch. So if you want to come through, say hi. You're more than welcome. See you later.